Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We have a lot of people from all over the world that signed up to this webinar. There was Ireland, UK, New Zealand, Australia, the States. So just really welcome to all of you. I know we're probably all on different time zones, but great to have you here. So today we have a speaker who's really passionate about STEAM education. I'm really excited to hear what she's going to say. But before I go to Paula, I just want to give you a little overview of Teach Cloud, what we do, and some of the free resources that will be available to you after this webinar. So my name is Dr. Wendy Ake. I'm the founder of Teach Cloud, and I created Teach Cloud during my PhD in early childhood education. So I'll only be talking for two minutes and then I'll pass you on over to Paula. But Teach Cloud is a childcare app that helps you to reduce your paperwork. If you're an early childhood educator or you own a childcare service, such as an early childhood service or an after school service, Teach Cloud can really minimize your paperwork. We have everything from invoicing to attendance, all the way to occupancy and fire safety. But what's really cool about Teach Cloud is we go above and beyond your typical childcare management app. We host events such as these, and we also offer free training and paid training on our e-learning platform called Cloud Academy. So that has everything from creating and implementing open-ended learning opportunities. And these are videos that you can access anytime. We also have something called Educator Pal, which enables you to answer specific questions. And based on the needs, the developmental stage of the child, it will create learning opportunities for you. So I'm actually demonstrating that now. And you can see once I've submitted that, it's going to generate a specific learning opportunity based on the needs of the children in my care and also based on the specific learning opportunity activity that I have chosen. So that's a little bit about Teach Cloud. And if you have any questions, email us hello at teachcloud.com. So, guys, before I pass you on over to Paula, please pop in any of your questions in the chat box. So you'll either have a chat box or a Q&A box. We're going to have a 10 to or five to 10 minutes question and answer round at the end of the webinar. And Paula will be able to answer those questions. So pop them into either the chat or the Q&A box, whichever one you can see. And we'll be able to get to as many as we can at the end of the webinar. So guys, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and I'm going to pass you on over to Paula. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to share my screen there before we start. Just give me one moment. OK, so hi, everybody. And I'd just like to say thanks so much to Wendy for um, inviting me on to um, do this webinar this evening. Um, I'm really grateful to have any opportunity I, I can get to talk about STEAM in early childhood education. Um, OK, so. So just to give you a little bit of an introduction and an overview of who I am. So as um, Wendy mentioned, my name is Paula Walsh and I'm currently a PhD student um, researching STEAM in early childhood education and care in Dundalk Institute of Technology in Ireland. Um, my research is co-funded by the Higher Education Authority Technological Universities Transformation Fund and DKIT. I also lecture um, on the um, early childhood programmes in DKIT in, as well. Um, just briefly before I start into STEAM, I also have uh, recently published um, a book called Shielta in Practice, um, which for those of you who are outside of Ireland is about the quality, quality standards for early childhood education and care. Um, if anybody is interested, I have the QR code there or it's available up on barupress.ie. OK, so. Straight into this, into it then um, about STEAM. So for those of you who are not familiar with STEAM, um, you, it's science, technology, engineering, the arts and maths. So you may have heard of the acronym STEM, which has really been around for quite a while. Um, and then back, I think, in the 90s, um, the acronym STEAM was um, first used 
in sort of academic literature by um, an American academic. And it's becoming sort of um, the, the, the more popularized um, term at the moment by bringing the arts into the other, uh, alongside the other STEM domains. And there's a very important reason why the arts, and just to just to sort of place emphasis on the fact that it's not just art, it's the art. So all of the performing arts, um, you know, music, um, theatre, everything. It's not just um, art as in painting and drawing. Um, but the reason why the A in STEAM is so important is because it facilitates expression. Um, so when we are sort of talking with children and listening to them express themselves. They may, might be expressing themselves um, using obviously speech if they're verbal, um, but they may also be expressing themselves using um, creative opportunities such as through music or through song. Um, and it'll give us an idea in uh, the arts and their creative expression give us sort of a window into what they're interested in, their likes and their dislikes. And it also, the arts allows us to introduce the other concepts of STEM to children in a way that they can understand. Um, so if you think uh, sort of a, um, an example would be maybe the song Heads, Shoulders, Knees and Toes, if you're familiar with that. Um, you know, for teaching children about body parts, which is biology, which is science, um, doing that through um, song. So the arts is really important as a way for us to express the other STEM concepts to children and for them to express their interests and their understanding of um, the other STEM concepts to us. So, for example, if we're singing heads, shoulders, knees and toes, we could very easily see by observing the children as we're singing if they are pointing to the right parts of their body and if they actually recognize those body parts or not. And um, also, you know, if for if you, you even think about adults as well expressing themselves, you know, if you're a scientist or an inventor or an engineer, you know, you need to be able to creatively um, share your ideas with other people um, in order to get maybe funding or investment or sales or whatever the case may be. So the arts, it's not just important to children, it's actually important for STEM uh, right through for for everybody really so steam really is you know very important to have that a slap bang in the middle of it for those of you who are joining us outside of ireland and um, you'll see the word ashter here and ashter is the name for the early childhood curriculum framework here in ireland so in terms of STEAM and how it fits in maybe with uh, the early childhood curriculum framework, um, I know from my own research and from talking to um, early childhood educators that sometimes there can be a bit of hesitancy or lack of confidence um, when it comes to incorporating STEAM or some of the areas of STEAM. Because if we look at, in Ireland in particular, if we look at the Ashter document it doesn't actually use the term steam or stem it doesn't really directly give us any guidance in terms of how we should bring steam concepts into our early childhood education planning however if you sort of poke around beneath the surface and look at the language of Ashter, like exploring and thinking or promoting curiosity or early maths concepts um then all of a sudden you start to see where steam is implied and is is um is within ashter and it is promoted in the framework without actually naming it that is something that is probably going to be named a bit more specifically with a bit more direct guidance in the next iteration of ashter which i think is due to be published next year but if we think of, of, of STEAM and an early childhood curriculum and we look at, you know, some of the principles of our early childhood curriculum framework, we think about Ashter talks about children and their lives in early childhood and children's lives in early childhood today are very much 21st century lives based around 21st century culture. And, you know, 21st century culture is very much connected to um, various areas of STEAM. If you take technology, for example, or science and scientific advancements, you know, um, 
children are able to engage with many types of technology from a very young age. So, you know, it really is um, relevant to their lives in 20, as 21st century citizens. And then if we think about another Ashtar principle, children's connection with connections with others. Well, if we think of the culture of how we interact with people, it has very much changed. Um, you know, we're interacting this evening over um, Zoom, which, yes, it's technology, but it also incorporates science because, you know, there's a science science behind, you know, the various kinds of, you know, waves or you know, I, I'm not a scientist, I'm not going to pretend to be and you don't need to be to, to incorporate steam. But, you know, there's science behind the technology. There's science and an understanding of um of science that makes all of that technology work, wireless technologies and Bluetooth technologies and, and things like that. There's maths in that as well. If we if we break down technology to its very basic, it's just a combination of ones and zeros. Um, you know, and there is also engineering because the um the hardware, the laptops, the cameras, all of that are end feats of engineering that were that were tools that were developed um to facilitate the technology. So, you know, the way we interact with each other has really changed. If we think back to COVID, how we interacted with each other and you know, children having video calls with their grannies, um, that's all changed too. And not even just technology, but even when we go into a shop and we interact, the way we pay for things has changed, the way we purchase things has changed. So very much um, all of those STEAM principles, when you think about them, um, are very relevant to how we uh, how we interact with others and the world in which children are interacting with others. And then finally, the Ashtar principle of how children learn and develop. Well, STEAM, as I mentioned, it will be given a bit more direct sort of um, guidance within the next iteration of Ashtar. But the language uh, is there to support STEAM when, when you sort of look through STEAM lens and look at Ashtar at the moment, you will identify that where, where STEAM can be brought in. But also in primary and secondary um, curriculum frameworks, uh, there's much more of a focus on STEAM in those areas of educational policy as well. So it's coming into the classroom, it's becoming part of children's lives at home and at school. Um, and all of those things are, are sort of feed into the rationale for why we need to be considering STEAM in our early childhood education setting and our curriculum and planning. It also, you know, relates to to um, the shield to quality standards. I won't go too much into this, but, you know, the rights of the child shield to standard one, you know, it talks about meeting children where they're at and where they're at is very much 21st century space. Um, so as their culture changes, our pedagogical practice needs to change, you know, to, to meet them where they're at and to make their um, early childhood education experience relevant and meaningful to them. And also, if we think about identity and belonging and supporting children's identity and belonging, you know, children are exposed by the culture that they're influenced or are influenced by the culture they're exposed to. And that's all tied in with part of their identity and belonging. You know, there's, you know, I don't know that there's 102 of us here at the moment and maybe some of us can remember um. A time before there was technology and the internet and all the technological advances we have now um you know so there if we were to bring an early childhood curriculum into our classrooms and into our environments now that would have been suitable 20 years ago well then we're not meeting children where they're at where, where, where they are at um we're not you know um considering the culture and contemporary culture for our contemporary practice so I know I've mentioned technology a good few times, and it is one area that I know through my own research as well that's highlighted as something that people can be fearful of, either because they're like they think, you know, oh, I don't know how to use that. I'm not very technical. Um, I can't use a smartphone very well, or I can't use the internet, or um, or children are having too much screen time. Why would I bring technology into my early years environment? So there is that fear there of technology. But what I would ask you to remember um, or to take on board from tonight's webinar is that when we're talking about technology, we're not just talking about digital screens and digital technologies. 
Um, we're talking about more than that. And we need to start really considering technology in its broadest sense. OK, and I'll go into that a little bit more. And um, Sharapan in 2012 has a really nice quote that sort of sums up what I'm trying to, I suppose, get across here. And she said that technology is just a fancy word for tools. Adults tend to think of technology as digital equipment, but crayons and pencils are tools. So are rulers, magnifying glasses, scissors, zippers, and even dump trucks. So all those things that are mentioned in that quote there are very clearly not digital. They're not screen based and they're sort of what I like to refer to as unplugged technologies. Um, you know, if you think back in, in over the history of the world, back to the Stone Age, um, when when humans developed the first, you know, um, stone headed axes and sharpened pieces of slate to make tools, that was technology and that was a major technological advancement. Um, you know, so we need to think beyond um, the last 20 years where technology was all digital and digital based and think of technology in, you know, the the, the, the broadest possible sense of the word. And when we are thinking of digital technologies, if we are considering digital technologies, it's important to think of active technologies and things that we're actually doing. You know, if you think of things like a digital weighing scales, a digital calculator, um, having um, a speaker in the classroom where the children can, you know, where we can, you know, play various music based on their interests or whatever. That's active uses of technology, as opposed to the passive consumption of just sitting there scrolling sort of mindlessly on through content um, on a social media platform. Not that you would have that in the classroom, but just to give you an idea of what I mean, we're not just handing children tablets, you know, and um, we're thinking about the active use of technology um, if we are bringing digital technologies into the classroom. So in terms of getting back to the overall concept of STEAM, you know, the benefits of STEAM are really to help children to develop skills and dispositions which are going to be relevant to them now and into the future as 21st century learners, 21st century citizens, um, and, 20, and in order for them to be active participants in a 21st century society. So things like curiosity, imagination, testing and trying things, experimenting, exploring, fostering their critical thinking skills and, you know, so that they can be supported to find solutions. So a lots of, you know, open ended questions about why did that sink? Why does that float? Why did you choose that? Or, you know, how high can you build this tower? Um, you know, that's all STEAM language and it's all bringing STEAM learning and STEAM concepts into the early years environment. You know, there's a child in the picture here splashing around in muddy puddles, you know, understanding the concept of water. Maybe the next day it's frozen and they can't splash. And how do we bring a learning from that through our interactions with the children um, or going out at different times of the year, learning about the seasons um, by actually going out and talking about them and experiencing, the, experiencing them hands on, the different sounds, the different smells, all of that is STEAM. Um, and, you know, it's all of that, if you think about learning about the seasons by interacting with nature in a hands on way, you're learning about science and biology, you're learning about concepts such as, you know, whether water, as I mentioned, is frozen or not, what makes it freeze, bringing in things about temperature. Um, so it's very much possibly tied into some things that I, I would imagine a lot of you are doing already, but it's just to think of where you can make this go, where you can extend what you're already doing um, in terms of STEAM and having the confidence as well that, you know, you don't have to be a scientist or an expert or an engineer, um, you know, or technologically minded to bring STEAM into your early years environment. So STEAM, I suppose, in and of itself, it's not an activity. It's not like now we're going to sit down and do STEAM. So the way that we need to think about STEAM is weaving the concepts of STEAM throughout the children's experiences in early childhood education. 
And STEAM is what we would call transdisciplinary. So it's not just now we're doing science, now we're doing engineering. You know, you can't um, build a bridge and be an engineer without having an understanding of scientific concepts like gravity, you know, or weight, mathematical concepts such as, you know, number and weight and um, mass and stuff like that as well. So STEAM is transdisciplinary. We can be engaging in what we think is one thing, but actually, you know, um, bringing in elements of other STEAM concepts. So if we're baking, for example, we might think that that's, you know, oh, we're just baking and isn't this lovely and we're enjoying it, but it's actually very scientific. It's a scientific experiment in itself. And we might use technology such as the digital weighing scales to weigh out um, the ingredients. The amount of the different ingredients that we need is maths. Um, and then engineering, you know, well, maybe we make a few cakes and we stack them together to make a tiered cake, you know. And as well, just to just, you know, on that, just to remember that to be STEAM, it doesn't have to meet every one of the STEAM. If it's two or more, it's STEAM. So you might be doing something scientific that we think there's maths in it too. That's STEAM. It doesn't have to meet every single one of the, of the areas to be STEAM. So I mentioned a couple of examples here as well. Engineering can involve maths and science, creativity and technology. You know, if we think of, a, of an engineer or an architect, for example, you know, they might consider that they have that they have anything to do with the arts. But if they're drawing, you know, what they're going to build beforehand, that's the creative arts. They have to express what they're going to do on a piece of paper first, you know, so we can do project work like that as well with children. If they, you know, if they draw something, you know, we can that we can encourage them, you know, to um draw out their ideas and then think about what resources you might need to build that and then build it. So you're looking at, you know, um, engineering and creativity there. Maybe it falls down the first time, you know, so there's lots of learning there, you know, in the why did that happen? Why do you think um, and trying and testing and problem solving? And then splashing and puddles can introduce weather, the natural world, learning about the seasons, as I mentioned earlier concepts such as wet and dry or splashing or even the water cycle and how rain is made for example or how snow is made things like that when we're thinking about incorporating steam into our early years curriculum or our early years planning so it's really important that we set children up for success by choosing developmentally appropriate resources that's something i suppose across the board that we need to consider all the time anyway um, and also, I mentioned unplugged STEAM earlier on, you know, so it doesn't always have to be if we're a lot of people think STEAM equals technology. It doesn't. It's just one part of it. And as I mentioned earlier, the digital technology is just one part of that again. So, you know, there's children in the picture here playing with, I think it's um, colored rice or colored beads and they're putting them through funnels and you know there's so much learning there to do with steam to do with science and to do with um that it's creative and to do with maths and lots of stuff engineering there the little girl making the towers we can be learning about colors all sorts of, of learning going on there um so they are what i would call unplugged steam you know, we don't need to use expensive robotics. We can obviously, we if we want to, we can advance on to that. But, you know, it's STEAM is very accessible using the resources we already have. And it's nearly a mindset, just viewing what we have and what we're doing through a STEAM lens and thinking how we can then expand on that. And where will that take us? Another word that you might see if you start to, to look up stuff to do with STEAM online is tinkering. And what that really means is just lots of loose parts to test, to try out things, to, to you know, sometimes um, tinkering can be, you know, stripping down something like a, a, a toy car, say, for example, and trying to figure out how it works and putting it back together. Well, that's probably a bit too advanced for children in early years, but it could be, you know, um, say, for example, having some having some um, pictures with um, certain um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, 
not jigsaws, but um, and not puzzles, <laughs> sequences of different shapes, say. And um, starting, it starts off as being, we put being together, then take, let them take it apart. See, can you put it together again? Trying and testing, no, that doesn't go there, moving it around, that's tinkering, you know? Or it could be just lots and lots of loose parts played, to try and build something, maybe a little fort outside with sticks and things, um, and just tinkering around messing around with it, trying and failing and trying again till we get it to be what we want it to be. Um, so there's lots of learning in that, you know, understanding why it's not working and what can we do differently. It's like a, nearly like a creative design process. So lots of loose parts play or junk art and remembering, you know, that it's process over product so that it doesn't matter if it starts off with an idea and it doesn't turn out to be that way. It's what we are learning along the way as we're doing it. So as I mentioned earlier with the, you know, maybe trying to build a fort and why is it, why does it keep falling down? What do we need to do to keep it up? You know, so, um, and that's where our role, I suppose, as a facilitator, that we can ask those questions. Why do you think that's falling down? What do you think we might need to help that to stay up? You know, giving them the language and prompting them the the, the ideas or prompting the critical thinking. Um, And also very much bringing in children's emergent interests. You know, so um, if we if children are interested in dinosaurs, for example, we can very much bring in other areas or bring dinosaurs into another area, you know, um, or let's make let's try and build a bridge that will that the, that will that will hold the way to the dinosaurs to walk over, you know, things like that. And also STEAM, it's very much about social learning and teamwork, you know, that they're, they're dispositions that can really be useful sort of skills that, you know, can be um, promoted through STEAM. So working together on something um, to find a solution. So in terms of STEAM and resilience, you know, I mentioned earlier on ensuring that it's developmentally appropriate because we want children to, you know, uh, to it's, I suppose, thinking, you know, of Vygotsky and in, in, in educational theory and the zone of proximal development, you know, we want to push children to, you know, to a point but within their zone of proximal development. There's no point in introducing materials that are too advanced because they lose interest and they'll feel that they couldn't do it. Um, and that obviously can affect self-confidence and self-belief. So it's choosing materials that are developmentally appropriate. And through the arts, you know, it are so important and so useful with all the other STEAM domains because children can express their thoughts and ideas and their understanding, as I mentioned at the start. Also, STEAM language, you know, children can develop critical thinking and problem solving and we can give them the language, you know, say going back to the to the to the idea of building a bridge that's strong enough for the toy di toy dinosaurs to walk over. Um, well, if the bridge falls down, we can, you know, talk about perhaps the bridge was too wide, you know, bringing in things like wide or high or maybe the dinosaurs were too heavy or what weight can the bridge take? How can we make it stronger? Um, or talking about the distance that the bridge needs to span. So bringing in STEAM language, then, you know, developing children's vocabulary around STEAM, which will then help them with their critical thinking and expressing their ideas and understanding. And, you know, it's OK to make mistakes and we want them to we want to develop that resilience. So STEAM gives them the opportunity with trying again, trying and trying again to, you know, to, to be able to do it, to be able to fix it, to be able to come up with a solution. Um, so it can be very, very um, good for supporting children's resilience. In terms of sensory play and STEAM, then, you know, I'm going to I suppose the next few slides we'll talk about some a lot of practical ideas that maybe you can bring into your, your earlier environment. So in terms of sensory play and STEAM, if we consider water play, um, well, we're learning about things like measuring, pouring, volume and weight, for example. If we use Play-Doh or we make Play-Doh, well, first of all, we, you can allow the children to like facilitate them to make the Play-Doh from scratch themselves is a wonderful STEAM um, learning opportunity in itself. And also adding sense to the to the Play-Doh, you know, to develop children's sense of smell and, you know, what could that be? And learning about different maybe herbs or different smells. Um, 
colored rice then um is all about touch learning about colors ice painting i had a picture back at the start on the slides actually where you know there's the 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 ice is fro or the paint is frozen into ice cubes and then allowing children then to you know spread out a big piece of paper on the grass or on the table or wherever you have your messy art and allow them to use the frozen cubes of ice to paint and you know they're going to learn all about touch and cold warm melting temperature you know and um, how long it takes things to melt um also thinking about things like shadow play so using light tables or even even having a desk lamp and setting up say um if children build some lego buildings for example or bringing various other materials different shapes and sizes against a white wall and using the using the lamp to cast a shadow um I saw a lovely um, learning story uh, recently where the children then they were tracing around the the shadows on the wall. Obviously, you could stick up big pieces of paper um, and learning all about shadow and how that works. And then sand play, you know, sand play is wonderful for engineering and uh, and maths and science, you know, learning about the amount of things and building various structures and what makes it what keeps it up and when does it get too high that it falls over and things like that so there's lots of steam that we can that's just some ideas i'm sure you'll have lots of other ideas yourself um for sensory play and steam another thing i like to think of you know is for to do with the creative arts as musical mats um, and maths is something that's really evident in, in music. You know, if we think about rhythm and beats, different patterns to the music and sequences, different numbers in terms of the uh, 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 of the beats, you know, we just have to look at, put on the music and children, children will start moving to a certain beat or tapping their foot. Um, thinking about um, the concept of sound, and then we can make musical instruments with children or just or ask them, what can we what in this room can we use to make a sound? You know, and it could be let them come up with their own ideas of who knows what they'll choose in the room that, that could be made into a musical instrument. Dance and movement for creative expression um, is wonderful. And also, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, action songs and things to do with 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 music. You know, we could bring in songs like um 10 green bottles sitting on the wall, you know, and learn about maths through music and through song. Um, as, as I mentioned, they're singing numerical songs, one to buckle my shoe, for example, you know, um, as well as another, another, another popular one. And then we can always create music together. You know, what can we find in the room to make music? Let's make music. Let's dance. You know, what does that sound like? Um, or I remember, you know, using ice ice cream tubs to make music with elastic bands. You know, when I was a kid and you made a guitar, like simple ideas, um, you know, that are helping children to learn about other various areas of STEAM through the arts. Another wonderful way to learn about STEAM is through storytelling. Um, and I'm just going to touch upon that for the next few slides. So a wonderful story that we can learn about lots of various areas of STEAM is the story of the three little pigs. So first of all, in, it's in the name, there's three of them. So we're, we're counting straight away. And if there's a picture here on the left hand side of this um, slide of a tough tray and, you know, it has, you can, it's a lovely tray, I have to say, that's not mine, but it's a picture that I got um, online. But um, it's lovely because there's opportunities there to build with various materials. Um, also, there's letters and numbers on some of the pieces of wood there. There's little creatures uh, or little pigs, little puppets or um, soft toys where children can creatively express and act out sort of sociodramatic socio -dramatic play, act out some of the story as they build various structures. Um, and you can see then there's another picture there with marshmallows and straws. So a wonderful hands-on way to sort of build and think about science and engineering and maths um, using straws and marshmallows 
to or I've seen toothpicks and mini marshmallows as well to build structures of various shapes and sizes um which pig you know if they're different sizes which pig will fit in this house why will that pig not fit in this house do we need to make it bigger taller wider longer you know um and then down in the middle there, we can see the two children collaborating and working together to make a house for one of the pigs. And then I love the picture on the right hand side where the little girl is learning all about the power of wind by blowing down and seeing how hard she has to blow to blow down the house. So loads and loads of steam learning there um, through the story of the three little pigs. So here I just have some other STEAM ideas that I sort of, when you start to really think about where you could extend the learning into. So in terms of the three little pigs, you know, in terms of science and trying to blow down the house, we're think, looking at wind energy. We could expand that into talking about, you know, the um, the 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 wind power and um, the large windmills to harness the power of the wind to, for electricity that we see all around the country. Um, technology, well, the various building materials, the sticks, the straw, the the marshmallows, and the and the um the 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 the, the, the cut straws or the or the or the cocktail sticks. They're the technology that we are using, the tools that we're using to build various um structures, and critically thinking about well, why did the straw not work? You know, why did that not work? In engineering, well, the building design, designing and building the actual structures is engineering. In the arts, then we have telling the story. Children might start to use the soft toys to tell their own version of the story or put themselves in the story, acting it out and role playing and making and creating maybe little songs or rhymes or stories themselves. And then maths, we have the construction of the of the, the, the three little pigs houses, learning about balance, weight, volume, amount and, and lots of other different maths concepts there. And then also, you know, there's other questions, open ended questions that could be asked there. You know, how is the wolf feeling? You know, the wolf is a big, bad wolf. OK, but 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 why is he the big, bad wolf? And how is he feeling? Um, how were the pigs feeling? You know, the wolf maybe was feeling hungry and was feeling I don't know what the kids will come up, but maybe he was feeling angry um, or hangry. <laughs> um, how are the pigs feeling? Well, they were probably feeling scared or whatever the children interpreted to be themselves. And then asking them to consider, well, why did they feel that way? Um, so there's lots of other things, other, you know, thinking about their emotions and their feelings that can be explored through this, um, this um, steam and storytelling process. Which house is stronger and why? And can you build a house out of stone? that should be straw not stray can you build a house out of straw sticks and blocks and what other materials or what would you choose to build your house from if the wolf was coming so lots and lots of open-ended questions to really get the children's critical thinking um skills going what do you think will happen let's test it out and then looking afterwards and reflecting what happened, what happened to your house when we tried to blow it down and how would you fix it or how, what would you do differently the next time? So you can really extend the learning out just from that one story into so many different things, depending on what the children are interested in and where the where it takes us when we start to talk to them and, and ask those questions and interact with them. And again, extending the learning even more out into the real world. What do wolves really eat? Where do pigs actually live? Maybe you might decide to go and visit a farm and see some pigs as part of your school tour or your, your, your yearly day out. Um, if you do that, we can explore the wind and the weather. What are buildings made out of and why? So maybe we can bring the children out for a walk in their local community and start to look at what the buildings are made out of um, and why are they made out of them, of those materials. Perhaps we could go on to explore different animal habitats. We might start with where pigs actually live and then think about lots of other animals um, and where they live. 
We might explore different types of homes and different types of homes around the world. We might move into, you know, where humans live and what people's homes look like in terms of, you know, where do we all live? And, um, you know, where do other people live? Exploring different kinds of homes around the world. Um, it's a great way for children to um, learn about their community and learn about diversity within the world as well. And then maybe we might build a fort. I mean, I remember having hours of fun building a fort with blankets and pillows under my uh, mother's kitchen table on a rainy day, you know, so that could be a great way for children to work and collaborate together, bringing in all of the things to do with science and engineering um, that they have, they've been thinking about, you know, what should we choose to build it with? What can we use that we have in the room? Things like that. So I'm just coming to the end uh, now. I mean, I could talk about it all day, but I just, there are just a few examples that I'm, I'm hoping will give you some inspiration. Um, so in terms of STEAM, also to remember that it needs to be, as, as, as with everything we do in early childhood education, embedded in play. So some ideas that I have here, you know, um, that I just wanted to sort of put together on one slide. So STEAM and play in early childhood education, we could think about baking, sand and water, full and empty sinking and floating activities, heavy lift, push and pull, different language that we use with children, building blocks of any kind, anywhere we're exploring shapes, we can go out and look at symmetry in nature, making our own music, listening to songs and dancing, thinking about times and routines, sorting and ordering, ordering things, climbing and jumping in the outdoors even is children are learning by doing and they're learning through their gross motor movement they're learning through using their bodies in the space about height and space um junk art a wonderful way to learn about um engineering and maths and technology but also to start bringing in the topic of sustainability and using recycled resources bringing in simple digital materials like a digital weighing scales. So again, just remembering what I mentioned earlier, that it doesn't have to be screen time. That's not what we want to bring into the early years environment. Um, mixing paints is like experimenting what's going to happen, what new colours are going to be made. Making the Play-Doh from scratch, thinking about what mounts do we need of the various things? Why does, why does it not feel like the Play-Doh normally does? Maybe we need to add more of this or less of that. And lots of singing and rhyming as well. I mentioned some singing and rhyming songs um, earlier on that we can use to bring in steam. And there's lots of other you know ideas around that online. So to summarize then, you know, STEAM is very much relevant to 21st century living and children in the 21st century. And, you know, even if we think of um, another example that I like to give that I meant to mention earlier is, excuse me, even going to the library nowadays, you know, it's a wonderful way to bring children out into their community, get them involved in, in reading and taking out books that, that, that they're interested in. But they need to engage with technology to do that. You know, I know in our local library and most libraries now here in Ireland anyway, you know, all of the books have um, an RFID tag or a radio frequency ID tag in the back. So you no longer have to go up to the library and get a little card stamped. You put it on a, a on a, a device and it, it, and it scans it and reads it automatically. You scan the barcode on your library card and, you know, it keeps a record that you have that card. Children need to have an understanding of how all this works to be able to engage in their community and in their world now. You know, it's not just technology for the future. Um, and again, thinking of technology in the broadest sense, it's not just digital screens. Very much use the resources that you have and remember it's process over product. It doesn't matter where we end up. It's what we learn along the way. STEAM helps children to become competent and confident to, you know, trouble trouble troubleshoot and problem solve and come up with solutions to things it is embedded in ashter and within many other curriculum frameworks and um, if it's not directly mentioned if you look at beyond that and look at the language that's used you know you'll see call for for for, for bringing steam into your practice there steam should always be playful and, you know, think unplugged STEAM, you know, it doesn't have to be digital. Think of unplugged opportunities for bringing in the concepts of STEAM, as opposed to thinking about, oh, well, I have to, you know, we have to have money for robotics or, or expensive equipment. We don't.
Um, this is a slide that I have um, that I put together for incorporating technology into early childhood education in lots of ways using non-screen based digital um, ideas. And um, I won't go through that now because we're coming up to quarter to eight, but there's lots of ideas there. And, you know, you will be able to see it in the slides that um, when the recording is sent out afterwards. And, um, you know, just to get people really thinking about beyond that digital kind of screen based technology, so many other ideas um, affordable and using stuff you already have and moving away from passive sort of engagement with screen technologies, but still allowing you to bring in technology in a meaningful way. And that is it from me. So. I hope you enjoyed that and um, that's just my contact details are on the end of it if you did want to reach out for any reason. So I'll hand back over to you Wendy. Great that was uh, amazing and it's a really short amount of time but you really gave us a lot of um, a lot of ideas and we have a comment here and a few questions that I'm going to go through. So one of them is hi Paula not a question but just wanted to say I love the idea of unplugged steam there are things that we're doing already and you've given lots of ideas to extend learning for children you've made me think about technology in a new way and the importance of arts wonderful i've so, done my job correctly so thanks <laughs> so a really great comment there um and i just have a few questions just we round up two or three sure. questions uh, one of them was how can educators modify STEAM activities to be inclusive of children with additional needs, backgrounds and learning styles? Can you give us a specific example that you've seen in practice or some strategies? Yeah, and I think what's really key is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier on, it's not about seeing STEAM as something that we have to do separately. It's about just trying to bring it in in a way that we already you know into the things we're already doing and maybe thinking about just extending that so very much looking at the interests of the individual children um you know i mentioned earlier on about um you know the outdoors being a wonderful opportunity which is you know for 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 children to go out and just be in nature and to you know even if you have a child who's possibly say restricted with movement wise you know that we can still go and observe and bring steam into the into into our interactions and our conversational interactions um and things like you know um other tools that might be used with children with additional needs like the light table things like that that we can you know maybe bring all of the children together to explore that um sort of alongside each other so as opposed to really thinking about using uh, resources like that that we have and that we would use anyway as opposed to thinking you know well I have to go out and get something specifically for STEAM because that's where you know we may end up maybe excluding people you know unintentionally if there's something that's too complex or not suited um, and lots of sensory opportunities I mentioned there as well and um, where STEAM can be brought into it um, you know, and, you know, say children, for example, um, are on the autistic spectrum, a lot of children love sensory opportunities um, and just bringing thinking about how we can bring even the STEAM language or how can we bring in different various resources um, or small parts into um, into sensory play would be what I would suggest. So trying to think about what you're already doing and extending it as opposed to thinking that it's something different to be done. Does that make sense? And um, the other thing that I love as well, uh, I mentioned earlier on about um, things like um, exploring the different kinds of homes that we all live in um, and then looking outwards sort of around the world. Different examples can be a great way to bring in um, diversity as well. Um, and we have a wonderful resource as well in Ireland, the Diversity, Equality and Inclusion Charter, which really has lots of ideas within that as well. So I'd recommend looking at that, too. And you might find some really useful stuff there. Great. And we have another question, which I think I know the answer that you're going to give, but they're asking what age group do you recommend three to five? Steam can be brought in from zero, zero to six, like is early years. And obviously for all, uh, you know, and beyond. But it's about thinking of what's relevant and meaningful. So even if we think about a, a six month old baby, 
um and you know if there's if there's um mirrored surfaces that's they're engaging with their reflection and um, they're recognizing or not recognizing maybe depending on the developmental stage that that is them and seeing then other people and making facial expressions and you know all of that is steam learning and can be brought in from the, the very youngest uh, the very youngest children in our care thinking about learning about different textures you know um there's a wonderful video up on the Ashter Shield uh, website uh, called the treasure basket um and it's um a, a small child she's maybe 18 months and she's sitting with a basket filled with things with various various natural things different scarves of different colors acorns you know um different colored shiny um stones and all of that is exploring steam concepts you know we don't have to be calling it steam um but when we really start to think about things with steam in our mind i find that we start to see the steam there so it's really open to 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 everybody i i write a blog um, on a web, my website, which is called um, the digital the digital early childhood educator .ie, and I recently wrote one about computational thinking for children aged zero to three. So you might like to go up and have a look at that. Um, you know, because I specifically wanted to write something that was to do with babies because they can tend to sometimes be overlooked in things like this as well that we jump when we're talking to early years we jump to the three to six year olds but it's really relevant to all ages you know if you think about even children with them you know um if the ziplock ba lock bags with the paint inside they can squidge it around and mix the colors you know okay that's not going to be a six month old baby but it might be a one year old under supervision so it's really you know it's 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 just about using your imagination and thinking about your your professional um you know understanding of what's developmentally appropriate and different kinds of resources for different age groups yeah, that's um, really interesting. And I love how you answer everything with so many different ideas that the educators can implement because we always get so many questions on that. Make the strategy yeah. something that I can actually do. So I'm just going to ask one um, last question to wrap everything um, to wrap everything up. How might you involve local professionals? So scientists, artists or engineers to interact with children, offering real world context to STEAM concepts? Yeah, good question. Um, and that is something that, you know, if that I think that's really where our partnership with parents can come in. Um, firstly, you know, if we're looking to bring people in from the outside, I think the first people we need to think about are the parents, you know, what parents can come in and talk about their role. Um, uh, maybe one parent is a nurse or a doctor or um a builder lots and anything where they can maybe come in and interact a farmer you know when I worked in practice which I don't anymore um and I live in rural county Carlo and the children loved farming and it would be very much a part of their lives especially this time of year you can't drive anywhere without getting stuck behind a tractor and um you know we asked one of the one of the fathers to um bring in the tractor now we were lucky we had a huge outdoor space so he brought in the tractor and the children were able to climb on the tractor learn all about the tractor and you know so I think thinking beyond the science has to mean scientist and engineering has to mean an engineer. People have elements of it, of, of those things in other jobs too, you know, that if we think about our parents and what they, what they do, maybe we can bring in other, bring in those elements of steam without having to think, Oh God, no, I don't know any scientists that I can ask, but then you could also reach out to the local primary school or the local secondary school in the area and maybe ask the science teacher, would they come in and do a few simple sort of um, kitchen cabinet experiments, maybe using baking soda with the children. But to be honest, there are things we can do ourselves. And what I really want to, through my sort of research um, and through webinars like this, is to get across to early childhood educators is you don't have to be a scientist or an engineer or a mathematician to bring these things in you know there's loads and loads of ideas to do with you know baking soda and vinegar and you know simple um experimental things even baking is science and science experiment um you know 
have confidence in your knowledge. You don't have to be a scientist to bring science into the classroom. But certainly, there, I'm sure that if you look at the cohort of parents, um, or 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 even in the, as I mentioned, the schools in your local area, that um, you know, if you wanted to collaborate with somebody and bring somebody in, because that is a great way to engage with your local community and have children interact as meaningful sort of citizens in their uh, active citizens in their own community as well. So it is a great idea to do that too. That's fantastic. And Paula, thank you so much for joining us. It's been really insightful. It was really quick. It felt like you were talking for five minutes. <laughs> but I really, really appreciate you joining us. And no problem. We're, we're recording this webinar and Paula's details, like her blog, I've also put them in the chat, but they will be available on teachcloud.com slash webinars within 72 hours. So that's teachcloud.com slash webinars. But I'll also be emailing everyone that attended that link and other resources as well. If you want to contact us, it's hello at teachcloud.com. 